Well, surprise, surprise, my water pump leaks on this LS1. To be fair, I kind of saw that coming. So this video will cover replacing an F-body style water pump. So this LS1 is in a 3rd gen Camaro and not a 4th gen Camaro, but the process is about the same. The first step is to get as much coolant out of the system as possible. I started by draining the radiator. I actually raised the rear of the car to get more coolant out of the system. My cold air intake gets pulled off. The throttle body doesn't need to be removed to change the water pump. However, I like making a little extra room, so off it goes. Some tape keeps anything from entering the intake. The steam port is removed, in my case it's this stainless braided Dash 4 line. My heater bypass hose is popped off, and there was a lot of coolant that flowed out, so keep a bucket handy. Next, the radiator hoses are pulled off. The serpentine belt is removed, and this is also a good time to replace the belt if you have an old one. I have an aftermarket turn 1 power steering pump and line, so it has to be wiggled out of the way in order for me to get the water pump out. The six water pump bolts can be removed along with the pump. The thermostat housing is removed alongside the belt tensioner. The new pump is looking nice and clean. So there are two versions of the thermostat housings, a single and a two piece. I have the single piece that uses an o-ring seal. Bolt it back up and torque the bolts to spec. And then the tensioner goes on and those bolts are also torqued. Two new gaskets are put on the pump and it's ready to go. The pump can kind of be annoying to install because the gaskets always seem to want to fall off, so just have a little patience here. So 
Snug up the six water pump bolts. The water pump bolts are torqued in two passes. The first pass is 11 pound-feet, followed by 22 pound-feet. I then reinstalled my steering pump and torqued the bolts to spec. Some lube helps the hoses slip on nice and easy. And then the top and bottom radiator hoses slip right on. Tighten down the hose clamps. Reinstall the bypass tube. And then reroute the serpentine belt, making sure that the routing is correct. A few cranks of the engine make sure that the belt is nice and aligned. Looks like nothing fell inside of the intake, that's good. Then the throttle body gets bolted back up, and the three bolts are torqued to spec. The sensors are plugged back in. My cold air intake and MAF plug are reinstalled alongside my PCV line. The steam port is tightened back down. And now it's time to leak check the cooling system. I use this vacuum fill system, it's very convenient. If the cooling system can't hold a consistent vacuum for about 10 minutes or so, there's probably a leak somewhere. No leaks for me, so I connected the fill fitting. The end of the fill fitting goes into a gallon of coolant. A quick flick of the lever and the system starts pulling in coolant at a rapid pace. And after two run throughs, the system is basically full. Remove the adapter and then pour the last little bit of Dex Cool in. I then tested the cooling system for electrolysis. A reading below 0.3 volts is usually acceptable. Below 0.1 volts is more ideal. Put the cap back on and that's it. I hope you stayed this long and enjoyed my video. If you liked my content, you can support me on Patreon, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.